Good morning, everybody. You're welcome to Bible study. This is I Believe Bible Fellowship. We are in Houston, Texas, and we're a bunch of believers who love the Lord unashamedly and unreservedly. We study scriptures. The Bible says line upon line, precept upon precept. And since we've been doing God has been faithful. He has taught us by his spirit. We have grown and we are bearing fruit to his praise and to his glory. We have been studying the Old Testament. We're in the book of Second Kings. We're about to pick it up from King this morning. Father, thank you for the honor and the privilege of breaking the bread of life. You said when we seek you, we will find you. In this house of the Lord, we seek not only your hand, Father, but we seek your face. For if we have your face, we have your hand. Thank you that by your spirit, you will show us the wisdom that's in your word. By your spirit, you will teach us and help us to apply it practically in our lives. Our heart's cry in this fellowship remains that we may know you. Fellowship of your suffering and the power of your resurrection. Help us, Spirit of grace, be worthy ambassadors and carriers of the grace of salvation that we may affect all that we come in contact with. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. All right, we're starting from 15th chapter of the book of 2 Kings. In the 27th year of Jeroboam, king of Israel, began Azariah, son of Amaziah, king of Judah, to reign. 16 years old was he when he began to reign, and he reigned two and 50 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jechaliah of Jerusalem. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah had done, save that the high places were not removed, the people sacrificed and burnt incense still on the high places. The Lord smote the king so that he was a leper unto the day of his death, dwelt in a several house, and Jotham, the king's son, was over the house, judging the people of the land. The rest of the acts of Azariah and all that he did are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? So Azariah slept with his fathers, and they buried him, with his fathers in the city of David, and Jotham his son reigned in his stead. In the thirty and eighth year of Azariah king of Judah, did Zechariah the son of Jeroboam reign over Israel in Samaria six months. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, as his fathers had done. He departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. And Shalom, the son of Jabesh, conspired against him and smote him before the people and slew him and reigned in his stead. The rest of the acts of Zechariah, behold, they are written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel. This was the word of the Lord, which he spake unto Jehu, saying, Thy sons shall sit on the throne of Israel unto the fourth generation. And so they came to pass. Shalom, the son of Jabesh, began to reign in the 930th year of Uzziah, king of Judah. And he reigned a full month in Samaria. For Menahem, the son of Gadai, went up from Tirzah and came to Samaria and smote Shalom, the son of Jabesh, in Samaria and slew him and reigned in his stead. And the rest of the acts of Shalom and his conspiracy which he made, behold, they are written in the book of the Chronicles, kings of Israel. Then Menahem smote Tifsa, all that were therein, and the coasts thereof from Tirzah, because they opened not to him. Therefore he smote it, and all the women therein that were with child he ripped off. The ninth and thirteenth year of Azariah, king of Judah, began Menahem, the son of Gadai, to reign for Israel and reigned ten years in Samaria. 
and he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. They departed not all his ways from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel sin. And Paul, the king of Assyria, came against the land. And Menahem gave Paul a thousand talents of silver, that his hand might be with him to confirm the kingdom in his hand. Menahem exacted the money of Israel, even of all the mighty men of wealth, of each man, 50 shekels of silver to give to the king of Assyria. So the king of Assyria turned back and stayed not there in the land. And the rest of the acts of Menahem and all that he did are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? And Menahem slept with his fathers, and Bekahiah, his son, reigned in his stead. The fiftieth year of Azariah, king of Judah, Bekahiah, the son of Menahem, began to reign over Israel in Samaria and reigned two years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. He departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. Becca, the son of Remaliah, a captain of his, conspired against him and smote him in Samaria in the palace of the king's house with Argal and Arai, and with him 50 men of the Gileadites, and he killed him and reigned in his room. And the rest of the acts of Pekahiah and all that he did, behold, they are written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel. In the two and fiftieth year of Azariah, king of Judah, Becca, the son of Remaliah, began to reign over Israel and Samaria and reigned 20 years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. He departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. In the days of Pekah, king of Israel, came Tiglath, Pil, Ilsa, king of Assyria, and took Ijon, and Abel, Beth, Maaka, and Janoa, and Kedesh, and Hazor, and Gilead, and Galilee, all the land of Naphtali, and carried them captive to Assyria. And Hoshea, the son of Elah, made a conspiracy against Becca, the son of Remaliah, and smote him and slew him, and reigned in his stead in the twentieth year of Jotham, the son of Uzziah. And the rest of the acts of Becca, and all that he did, behold, they are written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel. In the second year of Pekah, the son of Remaliah, king of Israel, began Jotham, the son of Uzziah, king of Judah, to reign. Five and twenty years old was he when he began to reign, and he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Jerusha, the daughter of Zadok. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. He did according to all that his father Uzziah had done. How be it? High places were not removed. The people sacrificed and burned incense still in the high places, built the higher gate of the house of the Lord. Now the rest of the acts of Jotham and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? In those days, the Lord began to, the Lord began to send against Judah, Rezin, the king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Remaliah. And Jotham slept with his fathers and was buried with his father, in the city of David, his father, and Ahaz, his son, reigned in his stead. Basically, we see that the same thing has been for hundreds of years and continues to repeat itself. Occasionally, there would be one righteous king who would uh, live right and, and please God, but because they failed to get rid of that one sin that Jeroboam had made Israel to sin, it was like the seed of sin remained within them. And it's a matter of time before it grows up and it rears its head uh, again. King after king after king after king in complete apostasy. Civil wars between the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. Things were just not right because the people followed not after the God of Israel. We can see the parallel in all the nations of the world today. Our country, America, is not any different. I'm saddened by the things that I see on a daily basis, either on social media, 
or or in the news. I, I don't listen to the news, but sometimes uh, a story might catch my attention and I will go and listen to it. It is sad what's going on in our country. It is evident to everybody that our president ought to resign or retire. It's evident. We don't know who's ruling the country, really and truly. And we're not able to pray as effectively as we ought to. And so many things are, are just going wrong. I, I, I was talking to someone in Nigeria a couple of days ago, and I said to them, America is fast becoming a third world country. I've been in this country since 1979. It's only now that we're having power failure. How and why? Food, buying food is a problem. Gassing your car is a problem. Just the basic necessities of life. I do not know of one person, except of course those who have mastered the art of stealing. I do not know of one honest person that's not feeling the squeeze. A nation as wealthy as this nation, how do you justify the money that we are pouring into foreign countries when we are suffering here? What does it take? What does it take to reverse some of these things that we know are directly responsible for the stuff that we're going through? I don't care about parties, and I've said that multiple times. I do not care who is in the White House as long as it's a righteous White House. I do not care. This country is far too blessed for us to see the level of suffering that we see. Education has gone to the dogs. Kids are just doing whatever that they want to do. I saw a, a brief video, uh, they call it shorts on, on YouTube. This father was shaving his son's uh, dreadlocks. Why was maybe, couldn't tell because he was hollering and yelling and carrying on, maybe, maybe 10 years old or 12. I could be wrong, but it wasn't a little boy like a six year old, right? This boy was taunting another child in school who was suffering from cancer and had lost all his hair. He was the butt of this boy's joke. And when the report came to his father, the father said, all right, I'm gonna take off all of your hair so that you know what it feels like to be amongst people and you're the only one without hair. You're going to be like the kid you were taunting. And you should have seen the comments from people. He's going to traumatize his son. I said he's going to traumatize his son. What has his son done to the kid that has cancer? What kind of heart is that? And all of these things are a direct relation of the society that has been created because the church has just played detente. That's where I'm coming from. I'm not knocking anybody, I can judge. I have the right to judge. The Bible says I can judge. The spiritual man judges all things. Yet he is judged of no man. It's in the Bible, go and fight Jesus. He wrote that. Our, our kids, six-year-olds, eight-year-olds, 10-year-olds, things we wouldn't even dream of thinking about when we were that age. We're going to church Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, singing songs that we call worship songs. I'm sure God shuts his window sometimes. And, and the man of God gets up and screams at us for 30 minutes, 40 minutes, takes our money and sends us away. And we've been to church. You go in dry, you come out dry. And you've been to church. We're not speaking.
to the ills of society. The big guys amongst us who have the platform and the money to be able to speak don't want to. They don't want to be cancelled. It's up to the rest of us who know our God. Daniel 10, 32, I think it is, or 11, 32, says, They that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. We're too preoccupied with our little this and that. I told you the other day, I said, God has a lot invested in America. America is the country is the one country that has spent so much on the gospel, sent so many men out into the gospel. And I use the word men in, in a generic sense. Yet in our own country. You just have to look through social media and you wonder how it became like that. I gave my heart to the Lord as a little kid. Uh, doesn't really count because I, I, I did it. But when I can say that I gave my heart to the Lord consciously was when I was 17. But I remember watching Rex Humbert on TV at 6, 7, 8. I remember watching Oral Roberts. I learned uh, Seed Faith from Oral Roberts by watching him on TV in Nigeria. What are we doing now? All of these kings, with the exception of one or two, the Bible says they did evil in the sight of the Lord. And just like the anointing from God trickles from the top down, even the anointing from Satan trickles from the top down. Until our government is right, until the people who represent us make decisions that truly represent our interests. Church has to get on its face and on, on, on its knees. Stop all our theatrics and, and, and production Sunday morning. We're more concerned about lights and smoke and all kinds of things than worshipping the true and living God. This 16-year-old king, the Bible says in the 70th of Jerusalem, king of Israel, Azariah, the son of Amaziah, the king of Judah, began to reign. He was only 16 years old, although he reigned for a long time, for 52 years. Right? The Bible says he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, but he failed like king after king after king after king. He failed to remove those two golden calves in Dan and Bethel. And that was what got them into trouble consistently. The fact that that thing was still standing and people were still we're still uh, going to burn incense and to pray and to worship and to sacrifice their children and all the atrocities that the foreigners were doing who served strange gods. They copied those things. The Bible records that the high places were not removed. The people still sacrificed and burnt incense there. And the Lord smote the king so that he was a leper. Now somebody is going to say, but the Bible says he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. But the Bible also says he neglected to cancel the error of Jeroboam, the first Jeroboam. The Bible says it's the little foxes that spoil the grapevine. You can do nine things right and the one, the last tenth one that you didn't do right can mess up everything else. Satan is a bastard. And he has no scruples. And there are no excuses in the courts of heaven. No excuses. The Bible says in Romans chapter 1. But thou, O man, art inexcusable. Not after Jesus has died and shed his blood and paid the ultimate sacrifice. I tell people all the time, if he died for me, is it a big deal that I should live for him? He hasn't asked me to die. He's told me to live for him. God smote him with uh, uh, leprosy. And let me correct that. 
Because if you read it just like that, you'll think what kind of a God this is. Truth of the matter is when we continue in, in, in iniquity, God's hands are tied. And the enemy has an inroad to afflict us. So the Bible can say God smote him with iniquity. It's not that it's not that God found the spirit in charge of leprosy and said, go and attack him. No. He put himself in a place where the grace and the power of God could not reach him or speak for him. And the enemy is crafty. Very crafty. It's not going to bother you about the things you're doing wrong. It's going to bother you about the things that you're doing right. And all of that is designed to discourage you and cause you to begin to say things you ought not to say or do things you ought not to do. Ask me about it. The son kind of became... A vassal, if you like, and he, he acted on his behalf and he judged the people of the land. All right? He died and another king uh, began to reign. He did the same thing, verse 9. He did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord as his fathers had done. He departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. I told you when we started Second Kings, I said you should note the number of times that this phrase is used. Shalom, son of Jabesh, he reigned at the time that Josiah was reigning in Judah. This was the time of uh, the prophet um, Isaiah as well. Same story. All of them. Menahem. He even went uh, to the extent of giving uh, all the treasures of, of the, of the uh, temple. And he compelled all the rich men to also cough up money for the king of Assyria. Because he wanted to form a league with him. That's bribery. Praise God. And then the next king, Pekahiah, he too did the same thing. Pekah, who reigned after him, did the same thing. Amazing. After Pekah reigned Jotham over Judah, Pekka was reigning in the northern kingdom and Jotham was reigning in the southern kingdom in Judah. We're talking about the kings of Samaria. They were the ones who were steeped in, in, in wrongdoing. Occasionally you'd find one king from the southern kingdom also go uh, haywire, but it was largely the kings in, in, in the northern kingdom. And that's why today they are not to be found anywhere. God has removed them from his presence. We don't know if they all died or if they were subsumed by other cultures that they mixed with. They are no longer around. Any questions, any thoughts in your mind concerning this? You see how the enemy can, can very subtly slip into your own life. God to be sober and to be vigilant. That's what the Bible says. Be sober, be vigilant for your enemy, Satan the adversary, is going to and fro, looking for whom he may devour. It's up to us. Any comments? Chapter 16. 
The seventeenth year of Pekah, the son of Remaliah, Ahaz, the son of Jotham, king of Judah, began to reign. Twenty years old was Ahaz when he began to reign, and reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem, and did not that which was right in the sight of the Lord his God, like David his father. For he walked in the way of the kings of Israel, yea, and made his son to pass through the fire, according to the abominations of the heathen whom the Lord had cast out from before the children of Israel. He sacrificed and burnt incense in the high places and on the hills and under every green tree. Then Rezin, king of Syria, and Pekah, son of Remaliah, king of Israel, came up to Jerusalem to war, and they besieged Ahaz, but could not overcome him. At that time, Rezin, king of Syria, recovered Elath to Syria and drave the Jews from Elath, and the Syrians came to Elath and dwell there unto this day. So Ahaz sent messengers to Tiglath, Pilsar, king of Assyria, saying, I am thy servant and thy son. Come up and save me out of the hand of the king of Syria and out of the hand of the king of Israel, which rise up against me. And Ahaz took the silver and the gold that was found in the house of the Lord and in the treasures of the king's house and sent it for a present to the king of Assyria. The king of Assyria hearkened unto him, but the king of Assyria went up against Damascus and took it, carried the people of it captive to Kir, and slew Rezin. And king Ahaz went to Damascus to meet Tiglath, Pilsar, king of Assyria, and saw an altar that was at Damascus. And king Ahaz sent to Urijah the priest, fashion of the altar, and the pattern of it, according to all the workmanship thereof. And Urijah the priest built an altar according to all that King Ahaz had sent from Damascus. So Urijah the priest made it against King Ahaz uh, came from Damascus. When the king was come from Damascus, the king saw the altar, and the king approached to the altar and offered thereon. And he burnt his burnt offering and his meat offering and poured his drink offering and sprinkled the blood of his peace offerings upon the altar. And he brought also the brazen altar, which was before the Lord, from the forefront of the house, from between the altar and the house of the Lord, and put it on the north side of the altar. And King Ahaz commanded Urijah the priest, saying, Upon the great altar burn the morning burnt offering, and the evening meat offering, the king's burnt sacrifice, and his meat offering with the burnt offering of all the people of the land, their meat offering and their drink offerings, and sprinkle upon it all the blood of the burnt offering and all the blood of the sacrifice. And the brazen altar shall be for me to inquire by. Thus did Elijah the priest, according to all that King Ahaz had commanded. King Ahaz cut off the borders of the bases and removed the lever from off them took down the sea from off the brazen oxen that were under it, and put it upon a pavement of stones. And the covert for the Sabbath that they built in the house, the king's entry without, turned he from the house of the Lord for the king of Assyria. Now the rest of the acts of Ahaz, which he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? And Ahaz slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. And Hezekiah, his son, reigned in his stead. It's amazing. This chapter could very well have been written of us today. Ahaz began to reign when he was 20 years old. And he reigned for 16 years. Altogether 36 years old for this moment. And he refused to do what was right in the sight of God, even though this was the sovereign king, which to a large extent still tried to follow the ways of the Lord. The Bible records that he walked in the way of the kings of Israel, even though he was a king in Judah. He made his son to pass through the fire that is to say, he sacrificed his sons to the foreign gods. 
according to the abominations of the heathens. He sacrificed and burnt incense in the high places and on the hills and under every green tree. So all the groves and everywhere that the heathen would worship their false gods, he too went and worshipped there. He certainly was not worshipping the Lord God of Israel. Um, the king of Syria and the king of the northern kingdom, Remaliah, the ten northern tribes, they formed an allegiance and came against Ahaz to overcome him. Uh, the Bible records that Ahaz sent messengers to the king of Assyria, asking him to assist him against the king of Syria and the king of Israel. Listen to what he said. I am thy servant and thy son. This is this is a son of Jacob, a son of Isaac, a son of Abraham, who had a covenant relationship with God. He could have gone to the God of Israel. As a king, he would have been trained in history. He would have known what God did to Pharaoh. He would have known all what God did in the wilderness for the 40 years that the children of Israel were there and how God delivered them on every side. He would know the history of Moses. He would know the history of Joshua. He didn't turn to the Lord God of Israel. He turned to a heathen God. He formed an alliance with his heathen God. He calls himself the servant of a heathen God. And it's typical of how we Christians now compromise. Jesus Christ said, come out from amongst them and be ye separate. That word is still valid today. He says, I'm your servant. Come and save me out of the hand of the king of Syria and the king of Israel. He took the silver and the gold that he found in the house of the Lord. The treasures in the king's house. These were the things that Solomon had done. If you remember Solomon's account in First Kings. He took all of those things, sent it as a present to the king of Assyria. The king of Assyria agreed, came and formed an alliance with him so that they could face the king of Syria, king of Israel. While he was in Syria, in Damascus, he saw an altar. Uh, it's sad that the Bible does not tell us the, whose altar it was, what, what God had that altar, little g. Or well, he saw an altar that he liked in Damascus. And the one that Solomon had built, that God had, Solomon offered 1,000 rams as burnt offering. And God's presence came into that temple. Such that ministers could not stand. He preferred the one that he saw in a foreign land. And he copied it and told Uriah the priest to build an altar exactly like that. And Uriah the priest, the priest of God, could not tell him, O king, I cannot do that. If you will have my head, more power to you. But I will not do that. Just like today, ministers can't open their mouth and speak against the ills of government and society. What's the worst they can do? Put me in jail. Kill me. Jesus Christ said, be afraid of the person who can kill both the soul and the flesh. Don't be afraid of the one that can just kill the body. When are we going to start speaking the undiluted truth of the word of God about what's going on in our society? Our children are forced to live in circumstances that we did not even see one hundredth of it. <laughs> you 
Elijah obliged the king and he built it. When he came back, he now began to offer all of the things that God told Moses, the children of Israel, to offer to him. But he was offering it on a strange altar. And there's no way God will accept it. No way. He went and brought the brazen altar. God said to Moses repeatedly, see that you do these things exactly. Because it was a pattern of what was in heaven. You now had the audacity, audacity to go and remove it from the forefront of the house. From between the altar and the house of the Lord. And you put it on the north side of the altar. And none of the men of God. Uriah and everybody under him. Could tell him, King, you are out of line. Just like today, nobody is speaking to authority. Nobody is speaking to power. Nobody is saying, no, you cannot teach our children this. Yes, it's a public school. Or what funds public schools? Is it not my tax? What makes you think because it's public school you can you can just develop any curriculum you want? To the extent that we are taxpayers, we can have a say. Does Uriah the priest, does did Uriah the priest according to all that, the, that King Ahaz has commanded? He went further after moving the lever. Listen, guys. <laughs> if you are not if you have not read my book on sex, you need to go and read it. And if, if you have not, there's a chapter of uh, about sex in the book on marriage. If you have not read it, you need to go and read it for you to understand. Why nothing in that temple should be rearranged? Yes, the book on sex. He wasn't satisfied with that. He went further, verse 17, to cut off the borders of the bases, remove the lever from off them, took down the sea from off the bracing oxen, that were under it and put it upon a pavement of stones. And I wonder what kind of stones. Because the stones that Solomon used to build the temple were not cut. No metal was raised against those stones. They, they, and they covered for the Sabbath that they had built in the house and the king's entry without, he turned it from the house of the Lord for the king of Assyria. He died. We'll read some more about him in the book of Chronicles. But it's amazing that I see parallels and repetitions even in the church today. Any thoughts? Any comments? Reverend Uduak, are you with us? Yes, Pastor, please. I have a, a, I'm a bit distracted here with some people and some issues we need to sort out. Okay. But I will soon be up. Yes, Pastor. Not a, not a problem. Thank you. For well, a number of us listening here. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Sister Gloria. Good morning, Pastor Mo, and thank you so much. Good morning. I always enjoy all your explanation. It just makes it so simple, but it sinks in. To call the long story short, thank you so much. Praise God. It just, uh, it's just a wonder how, anyway, God that created us said uh, he regretted creating us. 
And he said, we are always thinking about evil every time. But we need, as we have the Spirit of God, Jesus has died for us and he has come to save us. We give glory to God for knowing him Amen. and the power of his might. To see what we have read about Ahaz here, like we said, we can now see it in the present situation that we find ourselves. That we, ha I, we have men of God that cannot talk to authority just to be in their good books. The Almighty God cannot be put under any authority or power. Jesus Christ is above all powers and principalities. And we just need to have this in mind. I, I thank God that you have been able to relate it with what is happening presently and for us to know how we need to live our lives and guide our children because it is the children that we need to really guide like we first said in the beginning. I didn't see the video, but it, it hurts me, the comments of parents, and we wonder the kind of parents that we have. Thank you. I gave the, the, the father beyond thumbs up, all 10 fingers up, you know, for, for taking such a stand. Uh, so someone talking about him traumatizing the boy. Has the boy not traumatized the person that's, that's terminal? What kind of heart is in a, 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 a boy uh, under 12? I don't even think he was up to 12 because he, he really couldn't, he couldn't resist his dad. What kind of mind is that? No, no kindness, no compassion, no, no, no. Pastor, if he were my son, I'll do the very same thing, even if he was 20, very same thing. <laughs> That would be battle royale. <laughs> because at 20, if, if the boy is 20, how old would you be? <laughs> Praise God. We were whipped growing up. I'm not dead because I was spanked. I mean, it got to the point where all you needed to do was see the switch beside my father. You just needed to see it. You auto-corrected. <laughs> Self-aligned and autocorrect. They, they they have psychologists that are, that they have paid to say that it's traumatic to spank a child. God said, spare the rod, spoil the child. Are you wiser than him? Any other thoughts or comments? Laura, I see you nodding. <laughs> I just want to say like, I learned so much um, listening to you this morning. I know you do the Bible app. And after the speaker spoke, there was a um, program that you could follow, a plan you could follow about understanding um, the confusing Old Testament. And um, it was about raising the veil off of what's taught. And you raise that veil for um, so many people, young and old alike. And um you are a blessing to my life and to all the people that you um, service in God's name. Thank you, Pastor Mao. I love you. Thank you. That's very kind. I love you too. God bless you. If God is looking for a remnant. Let's ensure that he finds it in IBBC. He doesn't need too many people. He told Gideon, raise me an army. He didn't run out and got 10,000 men. God came and said, I don't need 10,000 men. He whittled them down to 300. If we remain constant and continue to seek his face like we're doing and not grow weary or tired, we'll see him move the way he moved back in the day. People must know that he is the only true and living God. All right. If there are no other comments, let's uh, take chapter 17. In the 12th year of Ahaz, king of Judah, began Hoshea, the son of Elah, to reign in Samaria over Israel nine years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, but not as the kings of Israel that were before him. Against him came up Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, 
and Hosea became his servant and gave him presents. That was tribute. The king of Assyria found conspiracy in Hosea, for he had sent messengers to So, king of Egypt, brought no present to the king of Assyria as he had done year by year. Therefore, the king of Assyria shut him up, bound him in prison. And the king of Assyria came up throughout all the land and went up to Samaria and besieged it three years. In the ninth year of Hosea, the king of Assyria took Samaria, carried Israel away into Assyria, and placed them in Hala, in the harbor by the river of Gozan, and in the cities of the Medes. Also it was that the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord their God, which had brought them out of the land of Egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and had feared other gods, and walked in the statutes of the heathen, whom the Lord cast out from before the children of Israel, and of the kings of Israel, which they had made. The children of Israel did secretly those things that were not right against the Lord their God, to build them high places in all their cities, from the tower of the watchman, watchmen to the fenced city. And they set them up images and groves in every high hill and under every green tree. And there they burnt incense in all the high places, as did the heathen whom the Lord carried away before them, and wrought wicked things to provoke the Lord to anger. For they served idols, whereof the Lord had said unto them, Ye shall not do this thing. Yet the Lord testified against Israel and against Judah by all the prophets and by all the seers, saying, Turn ye from your evil ways, keep my commandments and my statutes, according to all the law which I commanded your fathers, and which I sent to you by my servants the prophets. Notwithstanding, they would not hear, but hardened their necks like the neck of their fathers that did not believe in the Lord their God. And they rejected his statutes and his covenant that he made with their fathers and his testimonies which he testified against them. And they followed vanity and became vain and went after the heathen that were round about them concerning whom the Lord had charged them that they should not do like them. They left all the commandments of the Lord their God and made them molten images, even two calves, and made a grove and worshipped all the hosts of heaven and served Baal, and caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire, and used divination and enchantments, and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord, to provoke him to anger. Therefore the Lord was very angry with Israel, and removed them out of his sight. There was none left of the tribe of Judah. None. Judah kept not the commandments of the Lord their God, but walked in the statutes of Israel, which they made. And the Lord rejected all the seed of Israel, and afflicted them, and delivered them into the hand of spoilers, until he had cast them out of his sight. For he rent Israel from the house of David, and they made Jeroboam the son of Nebat king. And Jeroboam drave Israel from following the Lord, and made them sin a great sin. The children of Israel walked in all the sins of Jeroboam, which he did. They departed not from them, until the Lord removed Israel out of his sight, as he had said by all his servants, the prophets. So was Israel carried away out of their own land to Assyria unto this day. And the king of Assyria brought men from Babylon and from Cuthah and from Ava and from Hamath and from Sephavaim placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel. And they possessed Samaria and dwelt in the cities thereof. And so it was at the beginning of their dwelling there that they feared not the Lord. Therefore the Lord sent lions among them, which slew some of them. Wherefore they spake to the king of Assyria, saying, The nations which thou hast removed and placed in the cities of Samaria know not the manner of the God of the land. Therefore he had sent lions among them, and behold, they slay them, because they know not the manner of the God of the land. Then the king of Assyria commanded, saying, Carry thither one of the priests, whom ye brought from thence, <laughs> and let them go and dwell there, and let them 
teach them the manner of the God of the land. And one of the priests whom they had carried away from Samaria came and dwelt in Bethel and taught them how they should fear the Lord. Howbeit every nation made gods of their own and put them in the houses of the high places which the Samaritans had made, every nation in their cities wherein they dwelt. And the men of Babylon made Sokot, Benoth, and the men of Kuth made Nagal, and the men of Hamath made Ashima. And the men of Babylon made Sokot, Benoth, and the men of Kuth made Nagal, and the men of Hamath made Ashima. And the Avites made Nibhaz, and the Tartak and the Sephavites burnt their children in fire to Adramelech and Anamelech, the gods of Sephavaim. So they feared the Lord and made unto themselves of the lowest of them priests of the high places who sacrificed for them in the houses of the high places. They feared the Lord and served their own gods after the manner of the nations whom they carried away from thence. Unto this day they do after the former manners. They fear not the Lord, neither do they, neither do they after their statutes or after their ordinances, or after the law and commandments which the Lord commanded the children of Jacob, whom he named Israel, with whom the Lord had made a covenant and charged them, saying, Ye shall not fear other gods, nor bow yourselves to them, nor serve them, nor sacrifice to them. The Lord, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt with great power and a stretched out arm, him shall ye fear, and him shall ye worship, and to him shall ye do sacrifice. The statutes and the ordinances and the law and the commandments which he wrote for you, ye shall observe to do forevermore, and ye shall not fear other gods. And the covenant that I have made with you, ye shall not forget, neither shall ye fear other gods. For the Lord your God ye shall fear, and he shall deliver you out of the hand of all your enemies, howbeit they did not hearken but they did after their former manner. So these nations feared the Lord and served their graven images, both their children and their children's children, as did their fathers, so do they unto this day. Praise God. We have a long chapter. All right. Twelfth year of Ahaz, king of Judah, that's the southern kingdom, Hosea in the northern kingdom began to reign in Samaria. Like I told you the northern kingdom is sometimes called Samaria and sometimes called Israel. He did what that which was evil in his sight, but not as the kings of Israel that were before him. So he was even worse than worse than them. Shalmaneser came against him, and of course, because God was not his defense, he lost uh, the battle. King of Assyria put him in uh, subjugation because the Bible says he brought presents. Or well, the word presents should really be tributes. He brought tributes to the king of Assyria. And in time, the king of Assyria found conspiracy in Hosea because he went to Saul, the king of Egypt to see if an alliance with Egypt would deliver him from the tyranny that he suffered from the king of Assyria. So the king of Assyria came and took him, bound, sent him to prison. Came up to Samaria and took the place after three years of besieging it. Verse 7 tells us why. The children of Israel had sinned against the Lord their God which brought them out of the land of Egypt from the land, under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and had begun to worship other gods. The Bible says they failed to walk in his statutes. They did secretly those things that were not right against the Lord their God. Of course, it's not secret because there's nothing secret to our God. They burnt incense in all the high places. They served idols. They just lived any which way they wanted to live. God testified against Israel, God testified against Judah by the prophets and seers that he sent one after another, commanding them to turn away from their evil ways. 
But the Bible says they were stiff-necked and they wouldn't listen. They rejected God completely. Left his commandments. Made molten images. One thing it was clear. The second commandment. I shall not make unto thyself any graven image. I shall not bow down to them nor worship them. It broke all of the commandments. They worship the hosts of heaven. Today we still have people who are worshiping the hosts of heaven. You believe in horology or whatever it's called, or not horology, or astrology. Horology is the repair of watches. If you believe in astrology, you are worshiping the hosts of heaven because you are dependent on the stars to tell you when Jupiter is crossing Mars and uh, your business is going to do better. Absolute nonsense. Why should I speak to stars when I know the God who made the stars? Why don't I just speak to him? people that are reading the stars and telling you what the stars are saying, what is inspiring them? Even if they are accurate, where is their inspiration coming from? So Satan is a supernatural being. He can create supernatural stuff too. Right? The Satan said, therefore the Lord was very angry with Israel and he removed them from out of his sight. There was none left for the tribe of Judah. And instead of Judah to read the handwriting on the wall and see what was going on, all of the northern kingdom had gone into captivity somewhere. Even Benjamin, that was a part of Judah, God had removed from his sight. Is that not enough to, to straighten you up and make you want to do right? Same thing today. You have friends around you who see you living right, who see you going to church, who see you serving the Lord, but you invite them to come to church, they don't want to come. Judah had ample reasons to hold on to the Lord God. And so, God removed all of Israel out of his sight, verse 23, as he had sent his prophets and servants to tell them. So all of Israel was eventually carried away to Assyria. Is God. The king of Assyria brought men from Babylon, Kuta, Ava, Hamath, Sephavaim, and put them in Israel. Invasion, occupation, and takeover. There's a religion that does that today. They will invade the place, they will occupy the place, they will take over the place, they will kill the people there. So when they brought all these strangers to the land of Samaria, <clears throat> they did not fear God. So God sent lions to begin to discipline them. So they complained to the king of Assyria, saying, the nations that you brought to come and indwell Samaria, the, the covenanted land that God gave to his son, Abraham, and his descendants forever. They complained that uh, lions were killing them. <laughs> and listen to the stupid answer. The nations know not the manner of the God of the land. Yes, they didn't know the manner of the God of the land. But they didn't seek him either. Because God always has remnants. Always. All right. It does not matter who occupies the land. There is a God of the land. This is what Hamath needs to know. Everybody that's fighting Israel needs to understand that it does not matter who is occupying the land. God has a covenant with the land. We see it right here. There is a God of the land. And if you are not the one that's supposed to occupy the place, you will not occupy the place. So the king of Assyria commanded that they should carry one of the priests of Samaria back to the land to go and teach all those foreigners that he put there about the Lord. <laughs> 
So one of them came, dwelt in Bethel, taught them how they should fear the Lord. Listen, they're not saved because you suddenly turned to Jesus. They're saved because he first called you. That's why you're saved. The Bible says you are predestined to be conformed to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. And through the function of one of his attributes, foreknowledge, he knows those who will be saved. So you can teach people about God till the kingdom comes. If they are not one of those predestined, to be conformed to the image of Jesus, they will not receive the Lord. That doesn't say we shouldn't pray for everybody to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. Well, it's not everybody that will. That's just the hard truth. So put the priest there, let him teach them the manner of the God of the land. So this priest came. The Bible says in verse 29, how be it every nation made gods of their own and put them in the houses of the high places which the Samaritans had made. If the children of Israel had not made these high places before, they might not have had those places to continue the worship of strange gods. Verse 32, So they feared the Lord and made unto themselves of the lowest of them priests of the high places, which sacrificed for them in the houses of of the high places. They fear the God, the, the Lord and serve their own gods. How? <laughs> I still don't understand it. How can you serve the Lord? And, how can you fear the Lord and serve another God? It must mean that you don't know who the Lord is. There's a side of him that you don't want to come up against. Scripture says he's a consuming fire. Scripture says it's a terrible thing to fall into the hands of the living God. It's best for us to stay on that grace. You don't want to see God's wrath. They feared the Lord, served their own gods after the manner of the nations whom they carried away from thence. Unto this day they do after the former manners. They fear not the Lord, neither do they, neither do they after their statutes or after their ordinances or after the law and commandments which the Lord commanded the children of Jacob, whom he named Israel with whom the Lord had made a covenant and charged them, saying, Ye shall not fear other gods, or bow yourselves to them, nor serve them, nor sacrifice to them. Surely, they must have known the history of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The king of Babylon made an image of himself. Then when you hear the sound of the harp, the dulcimer, and all these musical instruments, Bow down. I, I love the response of those boys. We are not careful, O King, to answer you in this matter. We don't even want to discuss it. Our God, whom we serve, is able to de deliver us. And even if he doesn't, we're okay. We should be that bold. Verse 38, and the covenant that I have made with you, ye shall not forget, neither shall ye fear other gods. The Lord your God, ye shall fear, and he shall deliver you out of the hand of all your enemies. Howbeit they did not hearken, but they did after their former manner. So these nations feared the Lord, but served their own graven images, both their children and their children's children, as did their fathers, so do they unto this day. Unto this day. All of them in that area of the world have no reason to not serve Jehovah Almighty. None. These things are historical facts. There's a, a, a Christian archaeologist on, on YouTube. I forget his name. You guys should watch his, his, uh, his shows on YouTube. The things he's discovering that authenticates the Bible confirms the veracity of scriptures. The well in John chapter 4, he has found it. Verse 
I remember, uh, look it up. I'll put it on the group chat. I think, Laura, you have his, uh, yeah, if you have it, put it on the group chat. You should go and watch his work. Praise God. Any thoughts on the chapter? Any questions? Oh, the book arrived. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I haven't ordered mine, but I will. Put his name and the work on the chat. Anyone who wants to be studious can, can buy it. But he has a YouTube channel. Very interesting stuff. All those who say the Bible is incomplete. The Bible is just a book. The Bible is this. The Bible is that. Any thoughts, any comments? Thank you, Holy Ghost. God is so good. All right, let's take one more chapter. Praise God. Chapter 18. Now it came to pass in the third year of Hoshea, son of Elah, king of Israel, that Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. Twenty and five years old was he when he began to reign. And he reigned twenty and nine years in Jerusalem. His, his mother's name also was Abba, Abi, the daughter of Zechariah. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord according to all that David his father did. He removed the high places, he broke the images, cut down the groves, break in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses had made. For unto those days the children of Israel did burn incense to it and called it Nehushtan. He trusted in the Lord God of Israel so that after him was none like him among all the kings of Judah, nor any that were before him. For he clave to the Lord and departed not from following him, but kept his commandments, which the Lord commanded Moses. And the Lord was with him, and he prospered whithersoever he went. He rebelled against the king of Assyria and served him not. He smote the Philistines even unto Gaza and the borders thereof, from the tower of the watchmen to the fenced city. And it came to pass in the fourth year of King Hezekiah, which was the seventh year of Hoshea, son of Elah, king of Israel, that Shalmaneser, king of Syria, Assyria, came up against Samaria and besieged it. And at the end of three years, they took it, even in the sixth year of Hezekiah. That is the ninth year of Hoshea, king of Israel, Samaria was taken. The king of Assyria did carry away Israel unto Assyria and put them in Halah and in the harbor by the river of Gozan and in the cities of the Medes. Because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord their God, but transgressed his covenants and all that Moses the servant of the Lord commanded, and would not hear them nor do them. Now in the fourteenth year of King Hezekiah did Sennacherib, king of Assyria, come up against all the fenced cities of Judah and took them. And Hezekiah, king of Judah, sent to the king of Assyria to Lachish, saying, I have offended, return from me. That which thou puttest on me will I bear. And the king of Assyria appointed unto Hezekiah king of Judah three hundred talents of silver and thirty talents of gold. And Hezekiah gave him all the silver that was found in the house of the Lord and in the treasures of the king's house. At that time did Hezekiah cut off the gold from the doors of the temple of the Lord and from the pillars which Hezekiah king of Judah had overlaid and gave it to the king of Assyria. The king of Assyria sent Tartan and Rapsaris and Rapshakeh from Lachish to King Hezekiah with a great host against Jerusalem. And they went up and came to Jerusalem. And when they were come up, they came and stood by the conduit of the upper pole, which is in the highway of the fuller's field. And when they had called to the king, there came out to them Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, which was over the household, and Shebna the scribe, and Joah, the son of Asaph, the recorder. 
Rav Shaka said unto them, Speak ye now to Hezekiah, thus said the king, the king of Assyria, What confidence is this wherein thou trustest? Thou seest, but they are but vain words. I have counsel and strength for the war. Now on whom dost thou trust, that thou rebellest against me? Now behold, thou trustest upon the staff of this bruised reed, even upon Egypt, on which if a man lean, it will go into his hand and pierce it. So is Pharaoh king of Egypt, unto all that trust on him. But if ye say unto me, We trust in the Lord our God, is not that he, whose high places and whose altars his sky had taken away, and had said to Judah and Jerusalem, Ye shall worship before this altar in Jerusalem. Now therefore I pray thee, Give pledges to my lord the king of Assyria, and I will deliver thee two thousand horses, if thou be able, be able on thy part to set riders upon them. How then wilt thou turn away the face of one captain of the least of my master's servants, and put thy trust in Egypt for chariots and for horsemen? Am I now come up without the Lord against this place to destroy it? The Lord said to me, Go up against this land and destroy it. Then said Eliakim the son of Hilkiah, and Shebna and Joah unto Rabshakeh, Speak, I pray thee, to thy servants in the Syrian language, for we understand it, and talk not with us in the Jews' language, in, their, in the ears of the people that are on the wall. Rabshakeh said unto them, Hath my master sent me to thy master, and to thee to speak these words? Hath he not sent me to the men which sit on the wall, that they may eat their own dung and drink their own piss with you. Then Rabshakeh stood and cried with a loud voice in the Jews' language, and spake, saying, Hear the word of the king, the great king, the king of Assyria. Thus saith the king, Let not Hezekiah deceive you, for he shall not be able to deliver you out of his hand. Neither let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord, saying, The Lord will surely deliver us, and this city shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. Hearken not to Hezekiah, but thus said the king of Assyria, Make an agreement with me by present, and come out to me, and then eat ye every man of his own vine, and every one of his fig tree, and drink ye every one the waters of his sister. Until I come and take you away to a land like your own land, a land of corn and wine, a land of bread and vineyards, a land of oil, olive, and of honey, that ye may live and not die. And hearken not unto Hezekiah when he persuadeth you, saying, The Lord will deliver us. Hath any of the gods of the nations delivered at all his land out of the hand of the king of Assyria? Where are the gods of Hamath and Apart? Where are the gods of Sepharvaim, Hena, and Iva? Have they delivered Samaria out of my hand? Who are they among all the gods of the countries that have delivered their country out of mine hand, that the Lord should deliver Jerusalem out of my hand? But the people held their peace and answered him not a word. The king's commandment was saying, Answer him not. Then came Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, which was over the household, and Shebna the scribe, and Joah, the son of Esau, the recorder, to Hezekiah, with their clothes rent, and told him the words of Rab Shaker. Praise God. Uh, <clears throat> we've read this chapter, but I'm not going to break it down because it continues into chapter 19. And it's also in Isaiah. So tomorrow, we're going to go over chapter 18 again and 19. And we're going to go into the book of Isaiah so that we can tie and piece these things together to see uh, how Hezekiah walked with God to see where he kind of went uh, a little bit astray because he compromised. But then he came back to his senses and he cling to God and God came through for him all right even the mistake he made God fixed it and we'll see that in the book of Isaiah so let's bring our study to a close now um I cannot possibly break it down in in 12 minutes so we'll we'll take the chapter again tomorrow along with 19 and then we'll go into parts of the uh, book of Isaiah for you to see how God dwell, de dealt with him even when he made a mistake, God was still with him. All right?
Do you have any thoughts? Any questions outside of what we've done today? Thank you, Holy Ghost. I see a couple of people on the call. Andrew. And I see someone. Hello. Hi, Andrew. Can we see your face? Put a face to the voice. Thank you. I also see someone whose phone. Hello, Andrew. Oh, you've been before. What happened? <laughs> There's also someone whose uh, whose name is not showing, just their phone. God bless you, Andrew. It's good to see you. We hope you'll come back again. Samsung SM S928U. It's good to see your face. God bless you. Tomorrow's study is going to be interesting. I want to encourage you to come back. Center, do we have any announcements? No, ma'am. All right. Praise God. Uh, the folks that are going to Ghana on the uh, 10th of July, there's an update on the group chat. I need for you to go and see it. God is really moving in a great way, putting things in place for us. I do believe we're going to have a powerful ministry out there. All right. If you are able to enter into a fast, please enter into a fast. I started yesterday and I'm doing seven days. We want to see a demonstration of the power of the Spirit of God. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink. It's not talk. People have to see because believing has to do with seeing. It's faith that doesn't require seeing. And if there are if there are juju men and, and obia men and all kinds of uh which doctors out there, people see signs and wonders. So you can't come there and speak English. You've got to see the demonstration of the power of God. We're trusting God to show up and show out. We're having two crusades in two of the villages. There are two more villages that they have gone to scout that we will be going to. Once I have that information, I will let you know. But we're going to five villages in total. Continue to trust God for finances. I believe we're just under $6,000. We uh, Our budget is $9,000. So we need maybe like three and a half. Go. All right. If you need a letter from the ministry, uh, there's one available that you can give to people so that they can give. Is the Gloria, your hand is up. Yes, Pastor Mo, uh, is my question is a question and is not linked to what we have read today. Okay. But I don't know if you will oblige me and, and give me the explanation, shed more light into it. Go ahead. God will help Okay. Us. Uh, is in Psalm 62, verse 9. Surely men of low degree are a vapor. Men of high degree are a lie. If they are weighed on the scales, they are altogether lighter than vapor. I, I, I don't understand it whatsoever. You cannot take Men that verse. You cannot take that verse in isolation. Okay. All right. You got to read the whole song and and follow uh, David's thoughts. All right. Most of David's psalms were written um, during times of tribulation. You know, for most of his life, Saul was in a pursuit of him. Uh, he was running around with 600 men. At one time, it was 400 men, and Saul chased him with thousands of men. At one time, he had 30,000 men looking for him alone. All right. So he says, my soul waits upon God. From him comes my salvation. Obviously, he's in some kind of a challenge for him to be saying that. He's my, he, he, let me stop this so that it's not recorded alone.